Hello. Welcome, sir. The pain of losing your wife has affected all of us, and we are in mourning for this great lady just like you are. We are devastated by her passing. To me, it's as if I have lost one of my close relatives, a family member. Isn't that right? That's obvious to everyone, sir. Mm. Thank you. Bless you for coming. Please. Thank you. Please. Please, Jabba. Please. Is that man? That alchemist from Coruscant. Jabber, son of Haya. Yes, the one who's run away from Coruscant. He's leading Shia and an old friend of Envan's. The one who led the prayers for Envan's wife? Yes, Master. Ah. Thank God a scholar was present here and took the trouble of the prayers for me. Thank you very much. What I did was any Muslim's duty. If you have the time, drop by my house, Jabba, son of Hayam. Sure. God willing, I will come and see you if there is time. Everyone dies, my child. Everyone. Anyone who is born will one day definitely leave this world. The death of a loved one shouldn't prevent you from living the rest of your life. Think about your future. Have patience. My mother was unique. They mean kind, patient, gracious and good. Yes, we have all heard about her great qualities, but she is not with us anymore. It's your turn to fill up her empty place. Be as patient and kind as your mother was. Think of taking off your morning clothes and getting ready to get married. Becoming a mother and living your life, that's what you should do. It's not right for Envan's one and only daughter to stay alone. The thing is, she has to marry someone worthy of her and her status. The governor of Basra has offered. God bless her. She truly was a great woman. Worthy of Envan and his greatness. Worthy God bless her. Hello.
During the time he's been in Basra, he's held classes and misled the youth of the city. He speaks of alchemy and teaches people medicine, philosophy and wisdom. Alchemy isn't a bad thing if it's used the right way. It can be useful to everyone. Invite him to my house. I want to talk to him. His profession is a very important one. His profession might help increase my profits too. Hmm? Aside from the alchemy, he speaks of philosophy. Do you know what that means? It's Kufa. He turns Greek philosophy into Arabic and talks to the people in such a way that you think it is the only truth there is. <laughs> he says you can have faith in monotheism, justice, and judgment day with philosophy. Is there anything more sacrilegious than that? Let him gather up the youth and talk about Kufri and philosophy and the rest of the nonsense. He can keep them busy. What will happen? Is it damaging to us? Tell me. Huh? Actually, it's a good thing for people to be busy. With big words they don't understand, they can be busy and we can tax them the way that we want to. And they won't understand what we are doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? How do we know? Hmm? Maybe the people will learn to trust us more like this and listen to us more. We talk to them in simple words and they don't understand. So why would it be so different? Oh. Master, there's a rumor going that Jabo cures people and he does it for free. People come to see him from all over the city. And he's put everyone under his spell with his magical words. Master, people are already in love with him. They praise his ability to treat the sick. There's talk of him in every alley and street. If he tells people about his beliefs, and he invites them to become Shias, there are a lot of people that might join him. And do you know what that means? The Caliphate is still not as powerful as it should be. This man can easily turn the people against the Caliphate with his dangerous beliefs. And if that happens, Mansour Davanegi will certainly make life hell for us. We might be able to use him, you know. Didn't you say the people respect and love him? Well, we can invite him here and use his popularity to our advantage, huh? Master, he is a Shia. He has nothing to do with us. Why would he want anything to do with us? Ah, oh, I got it. Durhams and dinars. These days, they are a common interest for most people. Bring him over here and give him so much until he is tainted by our generosity and blessings. How's that? If he wanted to work with the government, he would have done so in Khorasan. His crime in Khorasan was conflict with the government and spreading the thoughts of Jafar ibn Muhammad. You can't expect him to change his views overnight and sit with us at the same table. The followers of Jafar ibn Muhammad have nothing in common with us. Not at all. Do what I said. I know how to talk to these people. Obey? Yes, master. Go to Envan's house tomorrow morning and bring Jabo here with full respect. Yes, master. God made mankind his representative on Earth so that he can become a fine example in the universe. And wisdom is the link between these two to bring about the proper knowledge of the truth. The truth for those who think and pay proper attention is as bright as the daylight itself. In the same way, just like getting 
to know God is clear and so obvious. Because God's essence is actually just pure light. A light that has no darkness, and no darkness can match. And so, just like our leader, our leader, the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali ibn Abi Taleb, teaches us in the Kumayal Dua, the brightness of everything can be found in the light of God. The leadership of the Prophet's progeny is like that light. No one can prevent its brightness and no one can prevent its light. If the curtain of ignorance is pulled away by the people, and knowledge and information replace this ignorance, then no dark governments can stand up to this leadership. Jabba. Excuse me, I'll be back. More power to you. God bless you. I think there is a problem. What problem? The governor of Basra has called for you. The governor of Basra? What for? He wants to see you. See me? But what for? I don't know. Will you go, or won't you? I don't want there to be a new problem. Get rid of them. Tell them when I finish my class, I will go and see the governor. Very well. Pour it. What is it? The guest didn't come. Welcome, Jobert. Greetings to the governor of Basra. I think the governor of Basra deserves much more than just a greeting. I assure you, greetings is the best word a Muslim can say to another Muslim as they meet. Greetings to you, Jabba, son of Hayyam. I've always said that great scholars like you deserve to be hosted in a greater palace than a governor's house. You've done me an honor to come and see me. Come, let's go and sit over there. Scientists are always welcome here, Jabba, son of Hayyam. Sit. Welcome. I've heard that, thank God, you're having a pleasant time in Basra, and I've gathered many students for your classes. Is that right? I am used to the calm before a storm. What storm? God forbid, has anyone created problems for you, my friend? Oh. Hey, Sami, Hadn't I told you to keep an eye on Jabber as long as he graces the land of Basra? My master, no one has the right to disturb these important classes. You see? The great governor of Basra will prevent any kind of storm that wants to disrupt the peace of his friends. A powerful governor like him can do anything he pleases. All the words that come out of your mouth should be written down in gold. <laughs> You'd sent for me, and I came. Tell me what it is I can do for you, Governor. You are right. 
I want to say that a scholar like you shouldn't waste his time and go from one city to another. You have to stay in one city and continue your educational activities with peace of mind. You see, Jabba, son of Hayan, we governors do understand something despite what you think. Did I say anything other than that? No. That's why I say that you are a great scholar. Come closer. I know well why you escaped from Khorasan and the Caliph is looking for you now, you know. You want to turn me into the Caliph? Basra is a calm city. The people of this city have been living in peace under the leadership of a knowledgeable governor like me for years. I don't want to interrupt the calm in this city. I don't want it to be a place for the soldiers of the Caliph to stomp on and turn life into hell for the people because they supported a scholar like you. Hmm. Also, I don't want to turn the people against me by arresting you. What do you say I do? Choose to do what will ultimately make God happy. Mm -hmm. That's why I sent for you, so we can talk it over together in a friendly way. Eat, please. Thank you. We can be good friends, you know. And if this friendship continues, I can intervene on your behalf to the Caliph. And you, my friend, can stay in Basra in peace as long as you want and continue with your activities. How does that sound? And what do you want in return? Your knowledge, just like the rest of the people. If you want to learn, then you can take part in my classes, just like the other people. If you accept, I will come. Let's say that I do. What do I have to do? Nothing. Your knowledge will be of great help to my treasury. In return, I will give you whatever you want. How's that? Is it a good deal? Huh? Let's say that I decide to share my knowledge with you. Then what I... I like you. You're into making deals. I told you he's like us. I told you, didn't I, you see? I will give you whatever it is a great scholar like you needs. And you can stay in Basra as long as you want with peace of mind, my friend. I will provide you with a well-equipped laboratory so you can continue your studies in alchemy. You can do your research with peace of mind. I will have the biggest library in all the Muslim lands set up for you here. We will have the books from the greatest scholars in the world at your fingertips, my friend. How's that? Good? All that in exchange for just my knowledge? I know, I know. I will have the best house in Basra given to you, so you can live there, my friend. Every month I will pay you an allowance from the treasury. How is that? How does it sound? It is nothing in exchange for the silver coins that will be turned into gold. It's nothing. Hmm. I will give you the biggest groves in Basra and a caravan with a hundred camels. How's that? Still not enough? Hmm? It shows you're not a dealmaker, Governor. Hmm. I will appoint you to a good position in the court so you can be a part of the government. How does that sound, huh? Others will give me more. Are you thinking of pillaging the treasury, the court, and my life, huh? No, Governor. Jabba is not powerful enough to pillage the great Governor of Basra's treasury. But your proposals aren't great enough to be able to buy me and the knowledge I hold. Hmm? What do you mean? 
I have a condition. What is it? Whatever it is, I accept. I will live in peace when the people are in peace with me. If you can rule justly and fairly, divide up the money in the treasury justly among the people, don't do injustice to anyone, and rule the way my leader, Ali ibn Abi Taleb, has said, then I will be at your service. You can think about my condition as long as you want. If you come to a conclusion, inform me. Goodbye. Goodbye, Judge. I told you, these shears have nothing to offer but stupidity. He came here with the intention of belittling you. Belittling me? Oh, I don't know what to do with him. Why won't you talk, Judge? Tell me what the hell we should do with this silly scholar. We have to. We have to come up with an excuse. What excuse? An excuse that will not disrupt the peace in the city. In no way disrupt it. <laughs> I jumped on the wall and said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> I think Jabir has another trick up his sleeve. I promise I can see it. Speak properly so I understand what you're saying, Umfaraz. I talk to Zulfa. I really think she must have fallen for someone new. Why won't you tell me everything, old woman? Zulfa is in love. 
I think with Jabba's son of... What were you doing there, then? I'm sure you were gossiping like always, huh? I gave you a thousand coins to finish things off. You definitely can't buy the heart of someone in love with coins, Governor. You were supposed to finish things off. She's in mourning. You can't offer condolences on the death of her mother and propose to her in one session. But no need for you to worry. I've already enticed her. All we need is for her to be tempted. Then everything will be over and perfect. You'll see. Everything will work out, Governor. What are you talking about? I don't understand what on earth you are talking about, old woman. You were supposed to get things over with. Go and do what I told you to. Don't come back here and give me that nonsense, old woman. Get it? Yes, I do, Governor. I'm Faris. You shouldn't let Jabber, son of Hyen, find a way into Zolfa's heart. You get it? Of course, yes. Rest assured, Governor. It's not only Jabber. What do you want, Sammy? Master, you have ignored another rival. Zobair. Zobair? What does that bandit want? Nothing. While Zofa has been in mourning, he's been trying to win her heart. Mm, I knew it. So I wasn't making a mistake after all. Master, I'm sure he has a lot of very evil plans in his head. Yes, yes. With the fire in his eyes, you could tell his heart was on fire. Sami? Yes, Master. Go and think of something to do with that bandit. Go. May God bless her. She was unique in patience and one of a kind, in kindness and compassion. She was like a mountain when it came to strength. She spent her entire life for me and never expected anything in return. Now you have inherited all those great traits. My hope is that I live long enough to see you become a mother and make me feel at ease to see you set foot in your mother's place. But it's a pity. Yes, it's a pity. I don't know what... what God's plan is that my one and only daughter hasn't found someone who is worthy of her. I don't know why. This is no time for that talk, Father. We're still in mourning. Yeah, yes. But your mother lived a decent life and she passed away in total decency. You're still at the beginning of your life. I have to think about you now. I have to be sure that you find a proper husband, God willing. I have to see you set up a life. This is the responsibility God has entrusted with me, my dear. You're saying the same thing, Zomfaris. The servants of the governor of Basra said, Father, have you come to an understanding with each other? The governor's servant? I don't understand. She hasn't stopped talking about it for one second. But you're wrong, Father. I hate even the sight of the governor of Basra. Let alone... Oh, damn him. What are you saying? Of course you should hate him. But I mean... Whatever that... you mean, please leave it to later, Father. It's only been a few days since Mum passed away. Truth is, there is something in my heart that I think is nothing but good. 
Maybe this is what God wants. What, Father? He is one of a kind in knowledge, kindness and wisdom. I don't know if what I'm thinking about is what you want or not, I don't know. Find a caravan with some coins, you let them go. When we attack a house that has something to offer, you criticize us. What am I supposed to think? Listen to me, Arm. The solution is not forgetting about decency and honor. The solution isn't doing injustice to the weak and poor. Envan is a man who is not weak, neither is he poor. Don't talk about Envan. He's an exception. Now, if you have an idea, open your mouth and I'll listen to what you have to say. Idea? Ah, my head is full of ideas, full of plans. I have an exceptional plan. But no, you don't have the courage. Do you doubt my courage and bravery, Arm? Very well, I'll tell you. But no, 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 no. You can't do it. No one in the whole of Basra can stop me. No one is out of my reach. Now open your mouth if you have something to say and I'll buy it, okay? <laughs> there is so much there, we'll be set for life. But no, forget it, forget it. We'll go for another plan. This one's out of our reach. What are you saying, Arm? You think I'm that weak that you don't even have to tell me what you have in mind? All right. See, he wants me to tell him. I Come will, Come on, but... talk to me. The governor's treasury. The governor's treasury? Huh? You're thinking bigger than your size, Arm. All right, all right. <laughs> if you think so much. And don't you think that I would have thought about the treasury before you, huh? Don't you think that that thought would have crossed my mind? That's right. That's right. But my plan is incredible. Are you crazy, Arm? The governor will die for his treasury. That's why the soldiers there are double other places. <laughs> you see, you backed out, Zubair. You backed out. All right. To prove to you, fine. I accept, okay? We'll go. But on the condition that your plan is without any flaws. Fine. I accept. Now listen so I can tell you all about it. This is the governor's palace, right? Here. Yeah. 